Hi everybody, welcome back to uh, the second of this two-part episode where I'm getting the uh, Tamiya F35 Lightning uh, airframe done. And in the last episode, I spent the whole episode virtually uh, preparing all these uh, RAM panels, doing all the masking and painting of those. And after the last video, I gave the aircraft, the whole airframe, a coat of Tamiya X22 gloss clear and uh, that was thinned about 50% with Tamiya Retarder lacquer thinners and it puts the X22 on really nice and smooth. It's actually had two light coats so it's decal ready uh, at this point but I'll just leave it another day it's uh, just yesterday that this was done so I'll give it a full 48 hours to make sure that uh, it's going to be resistant to the uh, decal solutions that I'll be using. So the main thing that I want to get ready while this is thoroughly drying is the undercarriage elements because once I get the decals on and the top coat I want to be able to get this up on its legs. Uh, we've already fitted the nose gear bay uh, but uh, I'll just get the uh, main gear legs sorted out and then that'll be ready uh, once we've done the airframe to as I said have it standing up. The first thing I want to do this week is to sort the undercarriage out. For those of you that uh, have watched the videos before, you'll know that I like to use sanding sponges, particularly for uh, rounded parts like this undercarriage leg. Uh, the sanding sponges are a lot gentler. They don't uh, risk putting a flat on round parts as a hard sanding stick like this might. Uh, and I used to use uh, flory sanding sponges but uh, they're not made anymore or they're not uh, sold by him anymore. They can't have been cost effective. So I uh, make my own now uh, from these, which are Tamiya sanding sponge sheets. This is a 400 grit one. And you can just cut these with a sharp knife, which is what I've done here. And mounted it with some double-sided tape onto a coffee stirrer. And that, uh, the coffee stirrer just stiffens them up a little bit. And they're nearly as good as the sanding sponges that I've used before.
I'll put the pylons together as well whilst I've got this time. Okay, so uh, we're another day on, and I think I can fairly safely add the decals now, so I'm gonna make a start with that on the underside. I'll just put one or two stencils on just to uh, test the water, if you like. So I'll uh, be using this sheet, 48140 from Caracal, printed by Cartograph, as I mentioned in the last video and it's got lots of options in it actually uh, for Australian, Israeli, Italian, uh, Japanese, Korean, Netherlands, Norwegian, Turkish and several US options which is what I'm going to go for and I'll be doing this option 16 125050. The downside of the Caracal instructions is that they're not terribly detailed, they're not that easy to follow and it's difficult to locate some of the stencil positions on it. So what I'll do is I'll use the Tamiya callouts here. This is the stencil sheet for uh, version A, which is what I'm doing. And they very precisely lay out uh, where the stencils need to go. So I'll just use this sheet for the locations, but obviously use the Caracal equivalent decals to the Tamiya ones. So I'm just using some microsets and I'll see if it needs any sol as well. But uh, cartograph decals usually go on pretty easily. You also remember in the previous episode I'd tested the Caracal decals for colour. Uh, against the paint mixes that I've applied to the model. And you can see that there's a decent contrast between the decal colour and the paint colour, which is what I was after. Sometimes on uh, grey airframes with low vis markings, it's easy to lose the contrast. So that's settled down really nicely. I don't think it needs any, I don't think that needs any microsalt. It's not always necessary. And in that case, I think we'll be okay. So I'm gonna leave that. It uh, always risks damaging the decal if you apply sol. So it's always uh, a good idea, I think, to test on uh, a smaller decal that you know that you can replace from the sheet.
These are going on really nicely. And I've just tried a little bit of microset over the top of these uh, jet exhaust warnings here. And they did just start to crinkle up a little bit, so the decals are obviously quite sensitive. And I wouldn't want to risk putting uh, microsol on them. I think that would uh, damage them too much, so my advice would be just a gentle softener on them. Okay, so after another marathon session yesterday, I managed to get the decals fitted. And uh, I did end up using one or two uh, of the Tamiya decals. So here, for the sling positions on the tail, I use the Tamiya decals. And one or two other areas, including some of the vents and exhausts on the underside. They, uh, the Tamiya decals have a slight mesh print on them so uh, they're quite nice actually and they did settle down pretty well for the Tamiya decals I did use both Microsol and Microset uh, they're a bit thicker than the uh, Caracal or Catagraph printed ones and you might be able to see here on this comparison of uh, try to get a picture of the Tamiya decal on the left compared with the uh, Caracal or Catagraph decal on the right and you can see hopefully on those shots the uh, Tamiya backing or carrier is uh, quite a bit thicker than the equivalent uh, in the uh, Catagraph print. So I'll just uh, give that another sealing coat of X22 then I'll follow that up with a flat coat. I want this uh, really quite flat. Then we can unmask the undercarriage base uh, and the cockpit. Okay, so uh, the airframe's ready to unmask now. I've given this that coat of uh, gloss varnish, the X22 to seal the decals in. And then on top of that, it's had uh, two coats of this, which is uh, Mr. Colour GX flat. It's a super smooth clear. And it's a really nice uh, top coat. If you want something that's really dead flat, uh, this will do it for you. And it's a very fine pigment, so there's no uh, grain in it like there is with quite a few uh, matte varnishes. So that was applied, as I said, in two uh, thin coats. I thinned it round about 
It requires a little bit less thinners than the gloss equivalent to uh, this, uh, which is very viscous and needs a lot more thinners to it. Uh, but there we are. I use that uh, a lot now for top coats on aircraft. So let's get this uh, masking off. We might need to do a little bit of touch up around the inside borders, but I can do that before next time. So uh, those integral one-piece bomb doors did a really good job of masking off around the weapons bay there. But they've served the purpose now, they can uh, be thrown away. That's not bad, we just need a little bit of a touch up uh, around the edge of the cockpit just to smart that up a little bit, but uh, I'm pretty happy with that, that's okay. You remember that I masked off all the sensors as well, so they can uh, all come off now. That's really nice. I'm glad that uh, I applied the bare metal foil to the recess behind uh, that sensor there. It really shines through. So I'm going to have to remove this section here because uh, I didn't fit the sensor unit inside. Maybe I should have done really because uh, I'm a bit worried now about taking that off and damaging it. But we'll see how we go. We'll do that next time. So I'll just temporarily fit the undercarriage legs. So uh, they're a nice snug plug fit. I might not even bother gluing those actually, but uh, obviously they need taking out and painting. Okay, so uh, that's as far as I wanted to get in this two part episode uh, to finish the airframe. Uh, and that's come out really nice. It's quite a bit of work, obviously, to do all the RAM panels, but I think it was worth it. Uh, I've also done all the uh, doors that I'll be fitting next time. Got the flapperons, main undercarriage doors here. These are the armament bay doors. 
and we've got the uh, vertical stabilizers and rudders as well so decent progress and uh, I'm looking forward to doing the next uh, bits of the build Okay, so that's it. We're all done uh, for this double episode. Uh, I've been thinking ahead about the rest of the uh, series for this build. And I think next time I'll aim to get the undercarriage fitted, uh, the cockpit done, other bits and pieces around the airframe, the lights and so on. Uh, and then in the final uh, episode, part six, I'll finish off the uh, weapons, which I've started off uh, earlier on in this video with the pylons. Get all those done and then wrap the build up uh, with that last episode. So I'll see you next time when we'll make a bit more progress on this and hopefully it won't be too long before she's finished. So look after yourselves everybody and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.